Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking our second look at the amazing Robert O.P. Harback scrapbooks. Now, you know I love these books and uh, this is the second part of a two-part series where we look at the books from like the 1940s up through to the 1970s. So there's some stuff here that even you may uh, remember from when you were young. Um, these books are just amazing. I mean, they're truly, truly fascinating. And if like you, you're into sort of old, old packaging and books and toys and things like that, then uh, these are the books for you. So anyway, that will be the subject of today's video. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so here we are with our second look at these fantastic Robert O.P. scrapbooks. And once again, they're all beautiful, massive hardbacks and they're just superb. So this is the uh, post Second World War period, the 1950s. And uh, in this video in particular, there's, there's stuff that, you know, potentially a lot of my uh, viewers will actually remember now, um, uh, possibly the older older generation ever so slightly, but there's some really, really great stuff in here. And I think uh, you're gonna really love these. So this is the 1950s one, and you'll start to see a lot of uh, recognizable brands, even though we are in actual fact talking 70 years ago now. Um, and you'll start to see the, the beginning of advertising and uh, science fiction and uh, television. There's so much happened in the 1950s, uh, just incredible. This is a really good snapshot of that decade, just in this one with uh, so the Guinness advertising down here. You've got Dan Dare, um, Davy Crockett stuff for Western memorabilia. Uh, obviously the Hornby trains we'd seen in the last video, Plasticine, uh, I Spy books. There's so, so much, it's just, incredible this is a really really good one and uh well they're all they're all fantastic but yeah these 50s 60s and 70s ones are just superb um here we are so start tvs of course you know so this would be a typical living room i guess with a, a tv in there's a little record player or tape deck of some sort there a radio there's a record player um sort of things that you might find in in a home of this period um, one thing that was certainly very big and in 1951 was the Festival of Britain. Um, in 1851, there was the original uh, Festival of Britain and then they did it again in 1951. Um, my, both my parents went to the Festival of Britain and um, I've got a little collection of Festival of Britain memorabilia myself. It's just a fascinating subject. I would have loved to have uh, been around to have gone to it. Um, all that's left now is Festival House that still stands um, as like a theatre um and event venue but everything else was demolished so they put up the display and it was there and people visited it most of the population visited it and then um then it was demolished which is a shame and there's not even a lot of video footage of it particularly in color um, very very little survives it's, it's very mysterious i guess because it was around for such a small amount of time um there there wasn't a lot but virtually every facet of life had something related to the Festival of Britain, created for it. And that's why I love it, really. Um, I got your Royal Commemorative. So obviously it was the coronation in 1953 and Elizabeth II came to power. And there was an awful lot produced for that. That's a, a celebrity, uh, celebratory Kit Kat there from 1953. Just incredible. Um, the people were still doing up their homes. I remember this uh, this range of porcelain was only available through Woolworths. I remember um, moving into a bedsit in the late 80s, early 90s, and literally taking it over from the people who'd been there before, and they had sets of this in the cupboard. Incredible. <laughs> they were still using it. Um, once again, the rise of domestic devices, fridges, um, kitchen utilities and hoovers and things like that were starting to become more commonplace. Practical householders, so people bought property and they started doing it up and creating homes themselves. This is the 1950s cupboard. So you've got the cereals along the top there again. So some interesting cereals. Um, early 
HP and Daddy sauce there, you know, ones that I uh, I really like the HP stuff. Cheeselets, squashes and cordials are there, the early Lucasade. I mean, where, where did you get these things from? I just, I just don't know. Pepsi, very early bottle of Pepsi there. Guinness, a can of Guinness there. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic when you think about it. This is the birth of frozen food. So people were starting to get freezers and that's some early bird's eye products, smedleys, things like that, that you could put in your freezer, dairy produce and ice creams. This is the start of it. Chocolate went to town. So, I mean, fantastic, uh, fantastic chocolate bar wrappers there. And um, some really interesting ones again. So a few that I remember when I was growing up, Spangles, there's penguins, look at those early penguin wrappers up there. Aeros, first time I think we've seen Aeros. Fantastic, the chocolate pages on these are just astonishing. So we've got um, your domestic products now, cleaning, things like that. I think this is the first time I've seen Omo. So, uh, so the rumor goes, you know, uh, a bored housewife, shall we say, would put a little box of Omo in her window and it would stand for old man out meaning she was up for a booty call, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> in the 50s and 60s. So there you go. Um, women's uh, sort of uh, uh, bathroom products. Interesting stuff there. So we've got uh, toothpaste again. There's some early like, um, like talc sets or soap sets like Hank, Noddy, um, talc and powder boxes and soaps here, early Kame. Fantastic, aren't they? Sunglasses. This is ladies, uh, ladies sort of accessories, should we say? Copies of uh, magazines of the time, the picture post, Woman's Realm, Vogue, early issues of Vogue there. Uh, so, cigarettes, once again, still a huge part of uh, the day to day life of British people. There's a selection of new brands, I guess, that were introduced at the time. Early Marlboro packet there from the 1950s. I know they were around before then, but first time I think we've seen those. Fireworks again, so we saw those last time. This is another double page spread of 1950s fireworks, so different to the standard ones we saw last time. These are some of the hardback books that were around at the time. He's got a um, copy of Dr. No there by Ian Fleming, and the first Darling Buds of May, some famous five. Um, some of the more traditional annuals, Lion Annual, On the Beat with PC-49 from the Eagle, TV comic, of course. Um, Rupert the Bear, Muffin the Mule, Andy Pandy, Noddy, Hank, all these things sort of came to be in the 1950s. This was their era, really. Here's some of the comics that were launched in the time, so obviously the most famous one being the Eagle, I guess, for... Uh, sort of viewers of this channel, but there was uh, other ones as well. There's Girl and Robin, and uh, uh, other ones continued. You know, Beano, Dandy, Topper, Beezer. They all carried on. This is a fantastic spread, particularly if you like a bit of sci-fi. So this is a a page virtually devoted just to um, Dander uh, toys and collectibles. Really, really fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, we don't see a lot of this around very often. I particularly like the uh, the ray gun up there. That's, that's beautiful. The Dan Dare memorabilia really is great. And the strips are still fantastic. The stories are amazing. Um, this is great. So it's got the first Subutio table football set up there, which is really good. Baco sets. Uh, Cisco Kid. I haven't seen, but I'm pretty sure they did start in the 50s. Um, Lego. So we'll see if we come across any Lego. There's a Slinky. So Corgi and Dinky Toys, Matchbox, they all came, they all got very, very big in the 1950s and they became a hobby for youngsters to collect with their pocket money. And um, in true Robert O.P. style, he's got some fantastically rare examples on display. Everything is boxed. It's just phenomenal. Uh, that page alone is probably several thousand pounds worth of stuff, if not more. Lovely to see. So this is uh, 
TV tie-in memorabilia in the form of board games. Uh, the Hancock's board game up there is a particular favourite of mine. There's a Bilko board game at the top, another fairly common one there. Uh, Army game, Beat the Clock, Dixon of Doc Green, Archie Andrews, Wagon Train. Some good stuff, eh? Pelham pu Puppets. Zoo Quest, the David Attenborough series. Then we've got more people buying new TVs. So this is advertising for new televisions that you can have in your home. Radio Times and TV Mirror now. I still don't have the TV Times, but the Radio Times are Hancock and uh, Phil Silvers. is early Benny Hill there. Um, fantastic stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Bilko is still good today. Hancock especially good today, I think. Um, early car um, uh, manual, so the, the Mini, of course, launched in 1959. You've got the Robin Reliant down here as well. Cycling, so rally bikes. And the joy of cycling, scooters as well, which is quite nice. And sidecars. <laughs> Going on holiday, so a few period 1950s. Um, booklets going to Butlins, for example. Butlins for your holiday. Then flying away for your holiday. Go to France, Italy, Spain. Good stuff. Well, obviously the birth of pop music was the 1950s and such a huge period. I mean, that would be a book on its own really to do it justice, but you've got the the sort of late 50s stars. Um, Frank Sinatra was of course popular throughout the late 40s and early 50s, but you've got Elvis, uh, Cliff, Cliff Richard, of course, Dwayne Eddy, um, Doris Day, you know, some of these uh, huge, huge names. Fantastic, early Shirley Bassey there. Photo play for the tying into the uh, movies of the period, the 1950s, have the, so many things come into their own. Marilyn Monroe, Lassie, it's just fantastic. And there's the uh, key events of the 1950s there. And more 1950s memorabilia. There's so much for the 50s onwards now because society has changed and we are uh, sort of buying this sort of stuff that it's, you know, the 50s could have been, that could have been three books to be honest, you know. Um, there was so much released in it. The 60s is, this is probably my favourite book of the series. Um, I love the 60s and 70s the most because uh, it's the sort of period where um, I can most relate to. And there's some fantastic, fantastic stuff in these. So let's just have a look. That was the cover to Electric Hendrix, which is a, a rare uh, mail order Jimi Hendrix album, as I recall. Here we are. So, I mean, the 60s doesn't really need much introduction, does it? It's uh, an era that um, had so many fantastic things start and continue throughout. It's just incredible. And every page in here is just amazing. Uh, there is Robert Opie again, uh, there he is, um, with some movie posters on the wall there, Goldfinger poster. <laughs> one of those, an original one of those is like, you know, about the best part of a grand now. Uh, some Carry On in 2001. Newspapers of the period, so, you know, this was the year of, you know, Free Love, the 60s, Man on the Moon, um, the Beatles, uh, there's so many things related to the 60s, Kennedy's assassination. It's very, very difficult to, to cover it on just the one book, but he does give it a go. So this is tableware from the 1960s. Um, sort of, uh, this is the start of the, you know, sort of like the Greek key and things like that um, were, uh, were prevalent for homemakers in the 1960s. And this leads into Practical Homemaker again and the latest gadgets that were available in the 1960s household. There's your 1960s larder, and boy, oh boy, it looks incredible, doesn't it? How times have changed. I love, particularly love the uh, like the Ribena down there, Lucasade, Tizer, Corona, Lemonade. Fantastic stuff. Um, your instant sort of coffee, your baked beans and spaghetti hoops over there is just also fantastic. 
far leaves rusks for the for the little ones. These are also really good. The cereals at the top, and he he really does go for it, doesn't he? Let me just zoom in on those. He's got your Joe Ninety and Captain Sky, the little Thunderbirds, and Mr. Spock, Sugar Smacks there, Frosties. He really uh, knows how to press the buttons. I mean, all those few alone there. Once again, the best part of a couple of thousand pounds easy you know, for the originals of those just incredible another incredible page and this is uh the chocolates of the period and you'll recognize some of these i think this is the first time i've spotted twix a malteser wrapper um, although these have been around before then smarties just look at that early smarties wrapper these are just incredible absolutely incredible and then on the other side some of the chocolate boxes like jelly babies and milk tray just amazing, absolutely amazing stuff. This is another page that I just love to death. And this has got um, sweet cigarette packets from the 1960s. And just look at them all, there's so many. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And uh, these are highly, highly collectible nowadays and uh, just superb to look at. I absolutely love them, uh, the sweet cigarette packets. They're really, really good. And they did carry on up into the 70s, in actual fact. These are um, lolly wrappers. And there's some good ones there. Wool Sky Ray and uh, Captain Scarlet. There's the little Daleks, Doctor Who one there, Man from Uncle. They're really, really nice, those. Uh, cigarette packets of the period and they all sort of do sort of follow a theme don't know how the packaging has changed into the 1960s the 1960s household products so cleaning products really really bright the, the actual packaging has got a lot brighter now toilet rolls there andrex toilet roll This is nice, so look at how he's done these toothpaste. So look at them all, with them popping out. How amazing is that? That's really, really nice. Um, just incredible. This is young, sort of young girls fashion bits as well. Fashion magazines, Twiggy, Cindy, of course, for the girls. They had the Cindy dolls. And here they are again, Cindy, Wendy, Barbie, Ken. Tressy, these are all a fantastic collection. In fact, look at what a fantastic collection of uh, of Barbie toys. They're really amazing. And now the women's mags of the period, fashion magazines. Well, the uh, alternative Oz Private Eye was launched, of course. All highly collectible magazines now, psychedelic covers. Teenage magazines of the period. Boyfriend, Jackie, girl, Marilyn, 19, look at that. Just incredible, aren't they? Radio Caroline, Teen Beats at annuals. TV Times is now launched. Ready, steady, go. The ready, steady, go book. That's quite common. Um, some good stuff, though. All the same. Radio 1 is launched up there on the Radio Times. Enemy was around. The Hit Parade. The Age of EPs. And the big, big groups. These are fantastic. I mean, what can you say? They're just really, really good. It was the period. This is just on the Beatles now. So this is a double page spread on Beatles and Beatles memorabilia, early uh, early singles, EPs, a bit of memorabilia as well. Um, Beatles Jigsaw says the, uh, the Corgi Yellow Submarine toy, the original one of that. John Lennon's hardback there in his own right. Sergeant Pepper, the Beatles guitar, the Beatles scrapbook. Nice Beatles memorabilia, really colorful. This is sort of the, the late 60s, uh, 1967, 68 period with uh, the peak of psychedelia, really. Um, Rowan Stones, The Who, Pink Floyd, early Led Zepp, and of course, Jimi Hendrix and Cream. 
transistor radios, little pocket transistor radios, a fantastic collection of those. Once again, superb, and don't they look great? Absolutely love those. Coronation Street, the start of the soap. So uh, um, Coronation Street glasses there, and then jigsaws, very, very popular in their day. Copies of the radio and TV times now. Um, some classic covers there, the likely lads. Not only, but also. Decamery here. Adam Adamant. Then this is a selection of movie posters. I don't know if he's actually got all these. I mean, they do look like actual, some of them are folded in that. So I'm assuming this is his collection of uh, cool movie posters. And there's some real crackers in here. Um, you know, looking at the, the Hammer, Dracula and Thunderbirds, Dr. Shivago, Easy Rider, um, The Great Escape, Magnificent Seven. This is a nice spread, which has got just on James Bond and James Bond collectibles, uh, the, the great pan movie tie-ins, board games, figures. That's the pan books down the bottom there. Little sets, some good stuff in there. James Bond and Odd Job Mark's dolls, or Gilbert dolls rather. The Goldfinger, Corgi car. Some more catalogues, car catalogues, and dinky catalogues there for the 60s. Once again, 60s touring, come abroad. Some early sun creams there, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Nivea. 60s comics, well, some might say that one of the most classic periods. Um, it's got uh, TV 21 there, right in the middle, and TV comic, fantastic shoot. Um, just so many great, great comics of the period. Some 60s board games now, so Danger Man. This early scale electric set. A Dr. Kildare stethoscope. I mean, never seen one of those since. Uh, just incredible. Triangle. There's an early action man at the top there, which is quite nice with a little accessory set. First action man we've spotted. It wouldn't be a book like this without some Doctor Who. So they've got the Doctor Who ray gun at the top there. Dodge the Daleks game, a Dalek jigsaw, Radio Times. The uh, Mark's Clockwork Dalek painting book, incredible basil brush, some Flintstone stuff along the top there, and Huckleberry Hound. These are the Campbellwick Green Village Folk along there. I used to have a few of those. I don't think I had them all, but I had most of them. Man from Uncle, Zed Cars, and the Magic Roundabout Curtains down the side. <laughs> and then, what a page this is particularly if you're into my sort of stuff. Um, all sort of Jerry Anderson related TV, memorabilia, supercar, Thunderbirds, Fireball XL5. How amazing is that? A really, really nice spread that. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? Just so, so much good stuff in here. Then you've got the sort of the science fiction, the robots, the space related stuff. Blast off game is very popular. Outer limits there. Man on the moon, of course, you know, making all of this super popular. The rise of the, uh, the British annual, 60s annual, so it's supercar, Blue Peter, which we've done. Uh, the Avengers, Man from Uncle. And then of course, 66, can't forget, that was the year Britain won England, rather, won the uh, the World Cup. And there's some World Cup memorabilia as well. World Cup willy, bits and bobs. Just fantastic. I think the 1960s one is possibly, possibly my favourite. Although the 1970s does come very, very close. So that's the one we'll look at next. So this is the 1970s scrapbook. And this is certainly one of the ones that I remember very, very well because um, this was the year I was uh, sort of growing up as a kid in the 1970s. 
and early 80s and uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that I actually remember. Um, this is the last of the year by, uh, decade by decade books that have been done by Robert Opie to date. I mean he didn't actually do the 1980s which is uh, a bit of a shame. So he, Fantastic, it was straight from the inside jacket with the uh, chocolate bar wrappers there with John Pertwee on and uh, early Wombles chocolate wrappers and soaps. I think he was actively going out and picking up things at this time uh, to enhance his collection. Um, so, I mean, if you want, you could perhaps pause on each page because there's so much good stuff in here. Um, I'm not going to be able to do every page justice in this video. We go on forever. <laughs> walls, uh, uh, just there's so much. That's just walls, uh, black hole, and uh, look in and Star Wars soaps. It's just amazing, isn't it? So there he is again, Robert Opie. He's done in his Sex Pistols uh, t-shirt there. That's probably a very. Uh, that's uh, Vivian Westwood. That's probably very very expensive. Looking at these uh, different t-shirts here. So that is looking at punk rock and uh, the Sex Pistols, which was very much part of the 70s. Um, here he is with uh, the introduction of decimalization, uh, getting rid of the old uh, coin system and going to decimal. Uh, once again, looking at the, uh, the improvements that you could do around the home. And then there's your 70s larder fantastic stuff so once again along the top he's got some lovely the sweet uh, the sugar smacks doctor who and um he's got the a magic roundabout uh ricicles up the top there uh, album it's the first time i remember seeing fred the baker um some lovely bottles down the bottom here tizer and pepsi Safeway lemonade floor i mean just incredible stuff and the cans as well so a really nice selection of early cans for like Coke and 7-Up, Lilt, and just incredible. Really, really good page, that. Um, but there's so much detail hidden away. Mr. Men, yogurt pots, for example. Remember those as a kid. This is really interesting. So this is a, a fantastic page looking at um, potato crisps. So this is the first time these have been covered, and there's some real good ones in here. Um, Ringo's, I remember as a kid, and Space Invaders, uh, Atom Smashers, early Monster Munch. Kung Fuies, <laughs> they're brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Once again, the, uh, the the chocolate page is a particular treat this time around with Texan bars, and you've got the uh, like Mister Men and some uh, tie-in chocolate bars, which we haven't really had beforehand. Tie-in some of the Disney movies. Some great, great stuff here. Curly Whirly, look three P, Mister Men bars. Yes. Really great stuff. There's your cigarettes of the period. So they've sort of all gone sort of up market and like gold in the packaging. Um, I can certainly remember, you know, people having these packets when I was young. These are your domestic um, products for cleaning your house. I mean, a few standouts there. You've got your head and shoulders. And then along the top there, those talcum powders tying in with various series, which is really nice as well. This is um, women's fashion and uh, young girls, teenage girls, Mary Quant and Lulu again still um, or on the rise, BB. Uh, great page really, you don't have, we haven't seen a lot of this but this is uh, your 70s platform shoes there uh, for men and, and women, uh, just great, great to look at those. Uh, women's fashion mags. You got your teenage mags here now, which are Jackie and Oh Boy blue jeans. Mirabelle. And then uh, that sort of leads into ABBA and the Bay City Rollers. Uh, very popular back then. The Osmonds, of course, the boy bands, the Jacksons, Jackson 5, and the Partridge family. Leading to the more mature stuff. So you got David Bowie, a Queen, Status Quo, Slade. Some Susie Quattro rare right in the middle. Nice little selection of cool pop badges as well, which are really nice with the uh, the different groups on. Kate Bush there. Then you've got the pop mags. So sort of the 70s, sort of start of the sort of progressive. We've got the stones there with the zipper cover. Band on the run, Eric Clapton. 
Um, some cool badges again, Santana, early kiss. Then you've got the later 70s, 77 upwards, 76, 77 with the punk rock era, the Sex Pistols, the Clash, the Buzzcocks. These are sort of uh, influential magazines of the time. They include Rolling Stone in there, but there was uh, others as well. Very short-lived, a lot of these. Oz got cancelled. Then you had the Mexico 1970 World Cup, the launch of a few more comics that action I see is included there because it's a football related one. It's Kevin Keegan. 70s cars, the launch of the great Ford Capri. There's the highway code for that year. I remember copies of that around. And uh, look at the confessions, but confessions of a driving instructor. There's a little flyer for the Robert OP series. And uh, as I said, we've just about covered Almost covered all of those now. Um, flying Abroad, Freddie Laker's uh, Laker Airline and Concord. Go to Longley. This is a nice page of Radio Times and TV Times covers. Uh, some great ones there. The Three Doctors, It Ain't Have Hot Mum, The Two Ronnies, The Good Life was launched, Faulty Towers, Going Straight, the sequel to, to Porridge. Some great stuff there. The professionals, I see. Kids Comics of the Era, so there was some fantastic ones launched in the 1970s. Um, I can't see 2000 AD, but that was launched there with the Doctor Who Weekly, Star Wars Weekly, Target, Star Lord, Action, um, some Warlord, some classic 1970s comics, Jet was another one. 70s Annuals, so once again a great, great selection of stuff uh, relating to the 70s TV shows and annuals. Um, seen most of those before but they're uh, interesting all the same and then the 70s tv um board games tie-in so you got the cold it's there and nationwide the sweeney kojak I remember having that one as a kid mastermind of course another great series the mastermind games the 70s toys so we got the uh, dennis fisher um tardis and talking canine the doctor who board game kaplunk paddington bear some James Bond bits and uh, Play School. Uh, Action Man again, Cindy, Muhammad Ali doll up there. Kojak car. Of course, he does include uh, the Star Wars, so he's got um, a nice selection of the 12 inch dolls and the Star Wars quad there. Um, he hasn't put any of the smaller figures in it, maybe just because these are a bit more, you can just see these are a nice uh, carded Mego there. Run a Star Trek annuals at the bottom. The rare Star Wars scrapbook, which is quite rare in the Black hole collar forms. Another selection of movie posters from the period. So we've got Jaws and uh, the James Bond films, Dirty Harry, Rollerball, Exorcist. So many great, great films in the 70s. 70s Royal Commemoratives. So these were the ones that were released for a lot of them for the Queen's uh, Silver Jubilee in 1977. Um, some great, great stuff there. So even now, very, very uh, nostalgic for some. Newspapers of the period, so uh, looking at the newspapers of the time. And then, once again, a selection of really cool um, character toys. The Abbott dolls there, Fonzie, Donna and Marie Osmond, John Travolta, and uh, The Muppet Show and The Wombles down the bottom there. So once again, that's a really, really great book. And that's the last one of the um, actual decade eras, all right? And then we have, however, got one more to go through, which is this, uh, well, two more, in fact. We've got the Royal Scrapbook, and then we've got his, like, compilation one. So the last of the scrapbooks we're going to look at today is the Royal Scrapbook. So, as you may have seen during the previous scrapbooks, each book he did actually include a section on Royal Commemoratives. And um, I think they did prove very, very popular because he's done a whole book related to the, uh, the Royal Commemoratives. Now, it's an area that I don't really collect myself, but I do find it interesting all the same. And for the sake of completeness, I think it was worth just covering this, uh, this book as well as my look at all the Robert Opie scrapbooks. So I shall just fly through this one, but as you can see, it is a great, uh, a great little book if this is of interest. And it is fascinating to see how um, Royal Commemoratives have changed over the years. Right up to today, in fact, you know, you're still getting the Royal Commemoratives. It's not something that's ever gone away. And is, uh, there's some real fascinating stuff in here, as you can see. Um, really, this would be a museum in itself in, when you think about it. That's a 
fantastic stuff here. And uh, I guess the raw stuff did actually get saved perhaps a little bit more than some of the other disposable bits and pieces, except maybe any of the consumable stuff, because I would imagine that would have got eaten, but they would have kept like um, uh, biscuit tins and things like that, you know. Um, so once again, a really, really nice little selection of royalty related stuff to the British royal family. And uh, certainly an incredible, it really is an incredible collection when you think about it. Robert Opie, Opie deserves a medal for saving all this and pulling it all together for the nation because uh, who else has ever attempted such a, uh, such a thing? It's just incredible. Great stuff, right up to the 70s, the uh, Charles and Diana wedding. Sorry, Andrew and uh, Sarah Ferguson. This is pretty much as far as it goes, up to there. And then Diana passing away. So that's the, uh, the royal one. And then the last one I just wanted to show you very, very briefly was this one here. So this is not a scrapbook per se, but it is by Robert Opie. And this is, uh, if you don't fancy in all the scrapbooks, um, this is a good little uh, one-off look at each decade. And this is the only book where he's gone into the 80s and 90s. So as you can see, it's very similar format uh, to what we've been looking at here. And uh, this is just all decades. And uh, he does go into a bit more detail of certain ones and uh, it's quite nice to see like a, a one-off book with all of this on. So there's an awful lot in it, so, you know, a few hundred pages. But once again, this is really, really well recommended and uh, it's quite nice if you haven't got the room or space or don't want to buy all the scrapbooks. Um, this is a way to have a, have a look at um, all the decades in sort of one easy volume. So we'll call it a day there. That's uh, my look at my Robert Opie collection. They're fantastic books, aren't they? If you uh, do fancy getting these, they are available in uh, from Amazon. They're all still in print now, so you can get them from Amazon or eBay. I'll put links down below to get your own copies. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular retro content. This is just the sort of thing I like to cover. And um, I hope you have in, enjoyed this video. Um, thanks once again for watching. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.